Please be seated. It's good to have you here at Trinity this morning as we celebrate Palm Sunday. It's a little bit different kind of day as we have, uh, if the weather holds, a palm procession and a procession around town with, the, with our donkey. Angela is helping uh, coordinate some things this morning, so uh, she's not going to be with us here in our early service, so we won't have a children's time, but that also helps us with our time. It's 9.45 is when we start to gather here on the lawn for our uh, parade, so we hope that you will be a part of that. You will see in the bulletin all the schedule of events that we have uh, starting uh, this afternoon with the last of our Lenten services. Uh, Reverend Dr. Robin Dees will be here to preach tonight. Supper is at about 545. Our service starts at 630. Uh, we will also have um, services this week. Thursday night is our Monday Thursday service. It will be here in the sanctuary. We will have Easter sunrise. Uh, Reggie Thaxton is leading that for us. I'm working with him for that this week, uh, this next Sunday morning. We're going to start at the Colin Berry, weather permitting, uh, and have a, a, uh, a fire there. And uh, come and warm yourself around the fire, and we will process in uh, to the chapel for our, our Easter sunrise service. And that will start uh, at about 7 o'clock next week. So you have uh, all kinds of things that are coming on in the life of the church this week. It's one of the, the, the highlights of the Christian year. We hope that you will be here for part of that. Our long-range planning meeting is this afternoon at 3. Uh, we have a charge conference right before the church council meeting on Tuesday night at 6.30 in the, the whole class. The missions committee is also meeting that night, uh, so we hope that you'll be there for that. Beyond Sunday, we have a uh, Nick Cunningham who has, been, who has written uh, the material for our small groups. Uh, we'll be here this Wednesday night. And by the way, uh, this isn't our normal Beyond Sunday. Our, uh, uh, if you haven't reserved for a meal this week, even if you're on that reserved list, uh, that ongoing list, please uh, do so if you're planning on coming uh, because this is an extra and uh, Beyond event that we have. I also want to just call out one other thing that we have next Friday for Good Friday. Uh, we, last year was the first time that we tried this, was the Stations of the Cross. And that will be during, uh, on Friday here in the sanctuary, I think it's from 11, you'll see the hours in the bulletin. You don't have to stay here for the whole six hours, okay? But it is a time for you to come and uh, reflect at the various Stations of the Cross and uh, have some quiet time on that quiet day. Friends, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. We invite you to stand and greet one another. In the name of the Lord. Friends, would you join me in our invocation? Lord God, we are thankful for this day and for the hospitality of this place, the smiles, the laughter, the love. We pray, O oh Lord, that this worship service will be your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to remain standing for our next hymn, O oh, Worship the King.
Thank you. You may be seated. Just so you folks know, usually on Sunday morning, and we have yet to figure this out, Microsoft gives our computer an update right before our worship service, and it throws our display out. Charlie, would you do me a favor, and let's make sure that we have the page numbers for Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, and joyful, joyful, we adore thee, just in case we don't have that. Ed's working very hard on that, but sometimes it does happen, and we do uh, apologize for that. If we could figure it out how to work that, that will, that's what we'll try to do. But you do have a Bible in your pew rack in case it doesn't come up. So I invite you to turn to Mark 11. Turn in your Bibles to Mark 11. If you didn't bring one, look in the pew rack there in front of you. Got it? It's up? Well, of course. It's doing a good word up there. But you could still read it out of the Bible. It, it won't hurt my feelings. Okay? It is uh, the Palm Sunday reading for today is from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? They told them that Jesus had, what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then, then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the holy word of our Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. And these things we ask you. Amen. Six verses. Six verses of instruction. Here in the Gospel of Mark, the normally rapidly paced Gospel writer who uses words sparingly. Here in chapter 11, the writer goes on a spree. As he offers the disciples detailed instructions about how to retrieve a ride, an unwritten colt, to carry him into Jerusalem and to the temple. Jesus offers the two unnamed disciples a veritable how-to list where to go, what to do, what to say if somebody says anything to you. How wonderful it must have been for those disciples to get such detailed instructions. And you know what? Events unfolded just as they were told. The cult was where it was supposed to be. People ask questions that Jesus said that they would ask, and the disciples replied just as they were instructed. And they brought the spindly legged colt of a donkey back to the Lord. Sometimes that's the way it works in scriptures. 
God gives instructions or directions as God gave Joshua after the death of Moses. God gave Joshua instructions about how the Israelites were to proceed and settle in the land. Oh, they were clear instructions. There are other times in the Bible where the instructions that God gives comes through a messenger, an angel. The angel told the shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night about how they would find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in manger. But God's instruction can also come in dreams when we're sleeping at night, as they were to Joseph when he was warned in a dream to take the baby Jesus and his mother to Egypt. But sometimes God instructs us and it's not through an angel, it's not through a direct voice, But that divine leading is found in something simple, like a star in the sky. The Magi followed a star in the sky for years until it stopped over the house of the Lord. Now there are times that God offers direction and instruction, and guess what? We decide that we don't want to listen to it or act on it. In the months before Jesus was to be arrested, Jesus spoke about how he would be arrested, how he would die, and how he would be resurrected. But the disciples didn't listen. They didn't understand. The Bible is full of examples of people like Jonah who decided to run in the opposite direction of what God wanted them to do. Sometimes, God instructs us through dreams, through nudges, through voices, and we run the other way. We fight those instructions, and only in time do we realize the error of our ways. At any rate, I suspect all of us, all of us in our lives, have received at least a slight divine nudge of a direction of affirmation in our lives. Maybe we got it and we didn't even know it at the time, only later did we realize that God was directing us, God was showing us the way. We might have heard a voice, we might have had a dream, or had a, a messenger of the divine speak to us in earthly clothing, in the form of a stranger or even a friend. Blessed are those times, and even more blessed are those times, when we respond faithfully to that divine instruction. But there are times when you and I yearn to hear a syllable from God, let alone six verses. We yearn for a voice of God, an instruction of God about where to go, what to do. For all of the times we claim people like the two, these two disciples or the shepherds, or the magi, or Joshua, or Joseph, or Mary, there are times in our lives when the next step that we need to take, or the next step that we need to take with God isn't clear. Times we don't hear that unmistakable instruction or see a divine messenger. These are the times that we're more like Job. Hungry, hungry for the word of God. Searching in the silence, especially, doesn't it always seem to be that it happens in the troubled times of our lives? When we're facing the whirlwind of chaos. I don't think it's coincidental that right after 
Jesus' clear instructions to these two disciples that the Bible tells us that Jesus rides a colt that has never been ridden before. And it was probably a challenge for the disciples just to get it back to Jesus from point A to point B. Donkeys can be obstinate at the least and downright rebellious, rebellious as well. And now, now Jesus is going to ride this animal. I can only imagine what the disciples were thinking. As the crowds pressed in and, around, in and around Jesus and that untried beast, I can only imagine what they were thinking about what the, the donkey would do with all of the shouts and all of the movement and the flash of fabric as it would be laid down in the path in front of him and all of the waving of the palm branches. How would the donkey react to a rider if it never had had the weight of a man on its small back? Would the donkey buck or bolt? Would it throw Jesus off to the shock and amusement of the crowd? Would the cult even go the right way? Certainly the optics of this moment were peculiar as Jesus had to lift his legs to keep his feet from dragging on the ground. And this was a tough crowd. This crowd had seen military leaders parade into town on splendid Arab chargers, mounts of hawk that were hardened by war and training. We hear six verses of instruction before. But in all of that uncertainty with this unridden donkey, we don't see any red letter words of Jesus. The gospel writers don't tell us about the miracle of Jesus on the unridden cult, how he calmed his mouth just as he calmed the storm at sea. I believe there's a word here for us. Because life is more often about variables than they are constants. Times of uncertainty compounded by the fear, by the absence of a clear word from God and about how we are to proceed. Sometimes God is silent in the chaos. When God does not offer a word or even a nudge. There are times when you and I seem to be riding on an unbroken colt down a busy street with no idea of what's going to happen next. Times we can't discern a dream or a voice from God about how we are to live. The big question in our lives, how we're going to get through the next impending crisis. There are times even in the life of the local church when we aren't sure of what to do, when we're not of one mind about how we are to be as a church in the living of these days. The truth is, we don't always ride the unridden colt, the unridden donkey, as well as Jesus did. There are times that circumstances of life throw us into the dust. Times we look foolish. Times that we fall and fail. Times that we even go backwards. But it is in our failure and in that holy silence that we miss an opportunity. It is in the silence that we overlook the presence of God. 
In the Old Testament, we read about a man of God named Elijah. A man who had a deep and abiding relationship with Almighty God. One time, Elijah was in a moment of, of, of his life where he felt like a failure. Because he seemed to be the only one out there fighting for the Lord. He seemed to be the only one that cared. He seemed to be the only one battling for faith. He seemed to be by himself against evil and injustice. And Elijah feared what the evil king Ahab and his consort Jezebel would do. And so Elijah fled into the wilderness near Mount Horeb, a wilderness to take refuge, to look for comfort, to look for direction, perhaps even to die so that he could be closer to God and have some fulfillment, he thought, in his life. And it's here, in that crisis, that an angel of the Lord tells him where to stand because the Lord would pass him by. You know, sometimes God talks to us in ways certain and cloudy, but nevertheless, a word from God, like Elijah in the wilderness, we don't hear it. But the angel of the Lord told Elijah where to stand, where the Lord would pass by and be present to him. Elijah stood there. And as he stood there, there came this great wind. A wind so great that it split mountains and broke apart rocks. But God couldn't, Elijah couldn't sense God in the wind. And then there came this tremendous earthquake. And I can't even imagine that Elijah was able to stand. This earthquake was so fierce, but God was not in the earthquake. And then comes this awesome fire, a fire of bright light an unbelievable heat. But God's presence was not in the fire either. And Elijah stood there after all of those calamities and catastrophes of light and sound and feeling were there. And he stood there and experienced the sound of sheer silence. He wrapped the mantle of his cloak over his head because he knew and felt God's presence in the silence. There will be times in our lives when we have crystal clear direction from Almighty God. Times that we may hear an audible voice. Times that we may feel a divine nudge. Claim a sign. A messenger. We are blessed with such times as the two disciples were as they received instructions about going to retrieve the colt. But you and I are also blessed in times of silence. When we seek to discern our way forward. Even when we ride through the unridden and the unridable chaos of life. A little later this morning, George the donkey He's going to walk through the streets of Sumter. And Tyler 
is going to walk beside him dressed as Jesus. I guess there's still problems with riding a donkey, even if it's an old and tried one. And Tyler will walk beside him. But nearby to George and Tyler will be Jennifer. Jennifer pretty much has control of George, the donkey. Because she has treats in her pocket and knows when to drop them on the ground so that George walks the route he needs to walk in an orderly and timely way. Jennifer is really the one in charge. In our times of chaos, godly silence, God is present with us. Even when we fail, even when we fall, God is there in charge of the situation even when we make our mistakes and wind up going in the wrong direction. God is there to pick us up and put us on the right path again. God works, thanks be to God, in the orderly times with clear instructions of life. But God is, thanks be to God, there in the silence, and there in the chaos, standing alongside of us as Jennifer stands next to George. God is with us even as we ride to Good Friday and confront our own sinfulness and failure. God is with us always. Thanks be to God. Amen. the Apostles' Creed. It's found on page 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose to the dead and sitteth in the right and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This morning, as we gather for our prayer time, we have a few announcements or a few concerns. They are not announcements. They are prayer concerns. Uh, you may have seen Emily here this morning. Uh, she had an accident playing softball with her hand and uh, had to have some surgery this week. So if you see her, give her a thumbs up, right? <laughs> But we're glad that she's doing okay. I also want to remind you, uh, Julie Griffin had knee replacement surgery this week. It's hit their family pretty hard because uh, last night, or this past weekend, last Friday night, uh, Lou Antru uh, fell and broke the femur in her leg. Uh, so we want to keep her in prayer. She had surgery yesterday. I also want to remind you or let you know, some of you may have heard about Ms. Janet A.Q. who is under hospice care. And we want to keep her in our thoughts and prayers as well as remember uh, her family at this time. Friends, let's go to the Lord for a few quiet moments and then we'll have our morning prayer. It is in the silence, O oh God, that we search. That we long for forgiveness, for guidance, for healing. It is in the silence, O oh God, that we seek your face. We're thankful, oh Lord, for the times in which you have given us divine leading, divine instruction, strength, hope, blessing. For we need, O oh Lord, your presence with us in the silence of our uncertainty and in the chaos of everyday living. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we journey this week to the cross with your Son, that we will look in our own hearts, we will look in our own lives, we will see the disconnect between what we are and what you call us to be. Forgive us and show us, O oh Lord, the fullness of your love and blessing. Hear the concerns that we have lifted up aloud today, O oh Lord, as well as the ones that are held close to our hearts. We pray now, O oh Lord, as your Son taught, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 
Now will our ushers please come forward for the dedication of our tithe and offer. Gracious God, we're thankful for the gifts that have been so humbly given. Bless the giver, O Lord, and may these gifts be used to further your kingdom in this place, in this community, and around the world. These things we ask in your name. Amen.
parade of hope, the parade of love, the parade of Christ among us. And in all of life, in the divine nudges, and in the divine signs, and in the chaos of your everyday life, know that God goes with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.